Good day and thank you for joining us. In today's lesson, we'll be carrying on with algebraic expressions except today we'll be multiplying and dividing them. So, a most common form that we can see these are with the brackets. So, we'll be looking a lot at the brackets today when it comes to multiplication. So, because we need to try and teach you guys uh, some of the main principles when it comes to multiplying out these brackets, okay? So, we'll start off here with these multiplication examples over here with, of the algebraic expressions. You can see we have a monomial here that's times in a binomial, okay? Monomial obviously being one term and binomial being two terms, okay? So, what's going to happen is we need to times this into these into the brackets, okay? And how that works is that this term will times into both of the terms inside the bracket. So, what I'm saying is first, you're going to times this into that. Once you've times that into that and you've got your answer, you're going to times this into that over there, okay? So, if we follow those steps and we work out the answer, so first thing we always need to do is look at the number first, okay? So we're looking at negative 5 times positive 2. That's going to give me negative 10. So you can see we break it up. Then we're timesing this x squared into that x. So we get x to the power of 3. Awesome. So that negative 5x squared times 2x gave me a final answer of negative 10x to the power of 3. Now I'm going to times it into the second term. So negative 5 times 3 is going to give me negative 15. And then we get, because x is in times, x is times, x squared is times in the y, it's not times another x, so it'll stay the same. We're just adding them onto each other. So we have x squared, y. Okay? And there are no like terms here, so this is going to be our final answer. So basically what I'm saying is when we times our brackets, we're going to look if there are any like terms because we need to bring the expression down to its simplest form still. So if there are any like terms, we need to add or subtract them and then we can get our final answer. But in this case, there are no like terms, so we have our final answer there. Looking at the second one over here, you can see we have a monomial times in a trinomial, okay? So it's the same thing now. This term is going to times into each term in the bracket. So we're going 1, 2, and then 3. Okay? So let's follow along those steps as we work it out. So, I'm going to say equal to, here we have a negative xy times in this 2x squared. So obviously there's an uh, invisible 1 in front of this x. So we're going to say negative 1 times 2. So we get negative 2. Okay? This x is times in that x over there. So we get x. So remember now, laws of exponents, we add exponents when the bases are the same. So it's 1 plus 2, that gives me 3. And then y stays as is, okay? Now we're timesing into that next term over there. We get negative xy times positive 3xy. So we're getting a negative 3 over here. Once again, it's a positive times a negative. x base are the same, so exponent of 2. And then we also have two y's times each other, so that is y to the power 2. And then finally, we can times it into that last term inside of the brackets. So we get negative times the negative. That gives me a positive. Then we have 4xy to the power of 3. Okay. So obviously, x had nothing to times there. So we left x as is. And y times that y squared. So we added the exponents and we got y to the power of 3. And as we can see here, there are no like terms to add or subtract. So that is, once again, going to be our final answer for this example. Then moving on to a different type of example. Now we'll be looking at some division, okay? So looking at these division sums, one thing we need to understand is that we divide numbers by numbers and variables by variables, obviously. But remember also now we're coming to our law of, laws of exponents. There's one that states when we are dividing bases that are the same, we minus the exponent, okay? So let's see what that looks like. So we have f 4. So we can look at the numbers first. 4 divided by this invisible 1 over here. So we're getting 4, okay? Because 4 divided by 1 is obviously 4. And there is an invisible 1 exponent over there. So remember, base are the same. So we know we'll have x. 2 
minus 1. Remember, we're minusing exponents. So it's just going to be 4x to the power of 1, so we can just leave the answer as 4x. Right? Let's do this one. This one will help us break it down a bit easily um, and make us understand the law a bit more easily. So we're doing negative 8 divided by 4. So that is going to give us a negative 2, right? So we looked at the numbers first. Now we look at the variables with the exponents. So they're both x, so it's going to be, sorry, it's going to be x, 5 minus 3, okay? Just put that there, it's 5 minus 3, so we get negative 2x squared, okay? So that's that answer for number 4 over there. Now we look at number 5. Once again, we're going to follow our steps. Negative 20 divided by negative 4. Numbers first, right? Negative 20 divided by negative 4, that's both negative, so we get a positive number. So we get a positive 5. Based on the same there with a, so it's going to be 5a, 7 minus 3. Remember, because we're dividing, so we get 5a to the power of 4. Then if we move on to this example over here, we can see that we have this term in front of this brackets and then there is a there is addition sign over here. We have this term in front of this brackets as well. So in these examples, all we're doing is breaking it up into different parts. We know that we have to sort out the brackets first, okay? So first thing we'll be doing is times using this into that and this into that over there times that into that and that into that over there so let's work this out quickly so we can do that first bracket so it's 3 times a we know we're going to get 3a 3 times negative 4 we get negative 12 so now we're looking at the next brackets over here it's positive 2 times 2a so we get positive 4a and 2 times negative 3 gives me negative 6. So now what we need to do is look at the like terms, okay? Because they are clearly like terms in this example. We have an A over there and we have another A over there. And we have negative 12 and negative 6. So if we work these out, so we get 3A plus 4A, it's going to give me 7A. Negative 12 minus 6, that's going to give me negative 18, okay? Remember, if the signs are the same, we just add the numbers and keep the sign, okay? So we got 7a minus 18 as our final answer. And then looking over here at the next example, we're going to have 6 divided by 2, right? So looking at the number first always. So that's 6 divided by 2. We get 3, and then we're looking at the m's, right? So this is going to be m, it's 2 minus 1, right? That's 2 minus that invisible exponent of 1 over there. And then we're looking at n, which is 3 minus 2. So what's going to happen is we're going to have 3m to the power of 1, n to the power of 1, okay? Which we don't obviously don't have to show that to the power of 1, so right? It's not 100% necessary. Then we're going to look at our last example here, which is going to combine both multiplication and division, okay? So we're going to put together everything that we have learned. So, if I can look here, we have this um, time situation at the multiplication situation at the top and that's all going to be divided so because we have multiplication at the top what we're going to do is we're going to work out that multiplication first okay so once again we're just going to apply our laws of exponents in multiplication so we're adding exponents where bases are the same so we're looking at the numbers first we're doing 5 times 4 so 5 times 4 is going to give me 20 x squared times x to the power of 1 that's going to be x to the power of 3. That's that 2 plus 1. And then we have y to the power of 1 plus 4. That's going to give me 5, right? And that's all going to be put over 
the negative 10x to the power of 3, y to the power of 2. <coughs> so here what we're going to do is we're going to look at the numbers first once again. So we have 20 divided by negative 10, that's a positive divided by a negative, so we get negative 2. Then we have x, 3 minus 3, y, 5 minus 2. So we know that 3 minus 3 is going to give me 0. Remember, anything to the power of 0, that's going to give me 1. So that will just fall away in this example. Because if we times everything by 1, everything stays the same. So we have no need for that 1. So let me just put that here. It was x3 minus 3, which gave me x to the power of 0, which gives me 1. So that can fall away. So what we're left with is negative 2y to the power of 3 as our final answer. So anyways, that's going to do it for our recorded lesson today. Thank you very much for joining us, guys.